the new Macs from Apple containing Apple's in-house silicon, deemed the M1 system and package, are widely redeemed as a great, if not revolutionary, suite of products. They're also starting a new era for Apple, where full vertical control of the Mac lineup closely reflects the same control they have over their other product lines. For all the reasons that these new products are great, there is an understandable hesitancy of consumers to adopt Generation 1 technology, especially software developers who rely heavily on tool compatibility to do their job. That said, I will be looking into that and all the other reasons that this may or may not be a good computer for a developer looking to buy a new computer in the short term. If you're interested in seeing a review of this computer from a consumer point of view, I'll include a link to that below. I'd also really appreciate a subscription and a like on this video if you end up finding it helpful. So with that said, let's get into it. As mentioned, the most important part of this decision for software developers is tool compatibility. Without tool compatibility, any other attribute of the laptop simply does not even matter as the software developer will not be able to do their job properly. So first to begin with IDEs and text editors, which is definitely the easy part. Like with other apps designed for x86 architecture, IDEs and text editors run without a hitch on the Rosetta 2 translation to ARM that Apple has baked into this computer. You install it and run it as normally, and although it's not optimized for performance or battery life, it runs just fine and the battery life even still is great. For me, my go-to text editor is VS Code. And although there is a beta version for the native ARM on Apple Silicon, the x86 also runs just fine. I've had no issues with the installable side tools and things like that. And I often also use Eclipse for certain embedded projects, which again runs just fine through Rosetta 2. So now let's get into command line tool and language support. My main languages on current projects of Python and C++ have worked without a hitch. Now getting installed these languages and related tools took some trial and error at first with Python especially, but once I figured out how to actually run the command to install Python using the x86, that was not a problem. I got it installed and it's been fine ever since. Now, as far as command line tools are concerned, there are a number of pre-installed command line tools, obviously the normal ones, and as a Unix-based operating system, those who have used Linux will be quite familiar with those. However, the first time I tried to clone a repository, I was trying to use git, so it prompted me to install the command line tools, and Apple has a package ready to go for that. I just installed it using the command it prompted me with, and beyond that, all the tools I'm used to, like vim, git, and so forth, have been installed and are working just fine. Now for certain command line tools and programs that are only written to be used in x86 and have not yet been translated, you can still run those and there is a manner of using Rosetta 2 actually in the command line. And I can include links to instructions for that below as well. As a whole, using this as a developer, it feels familiar since I do quite like Linux and this is Unix based. And it also has all the command line tools I have needed and I use quite a few. So this computer being a Mac, let's talk for a second about Windows, Mac OS versus Linux. So I personally am happy to never use Windows again besides for gaming. It just isn't great for me as a developer. I definitely prefer Linux. That's what I use day to day on my desktop. And the Mac OS is kind of a healthy medium feel for me. I like that the Unix-based operating system feels like home and command line, 
but I also like the polish that Linux can sometimes simply lack. It's nice also that it has the iOS ecosystem, which I am kind of in myself. If you aren't, that's not really a consideration. But as a whole, I think it's a healthy middle ground for developers to be at. And you can, of course, install Linux on this Mac easily, relatively easily, that is, and get that experience with the Mac hardware. So this being a conversation about laptops, let's talk about why you might choose the MacBook Air or why you might step it up to the MacBook Pro. I'm going to leave out of this conversation the new Mac Mini with Apple Silicon, mostly because it's simply a very different use case and I think as a developer you know who you are if you want a Mac Mini. It's a cheap way into the Apple ecosystem and if you like developing on Mac OS, and you don't wanna to pay too much for a Mac Pro or something like that, it's a great way to go. So regarding why someone might choose a MacBook Air, it's not that you're not getting your money's worth with the MacBook Air. In fact, it's a great value at starting at $1,000. You're getting sometimes twice the performance of a laptop the same price. You're getting astoundingly good battery life even though it's not quite as good as the MacBook Pro can be. And overall, it's a great package, obviously very light and portable, and you get the Mac OS experience for a reasonable price. Something else that I wanna talk about briefly regarding the MacBook Air, and I think it's not really talked about enough, but I think it's actually a huge advantage that the MacBook Air does not have a fan. For very comparable performance, to the MacBook Pro, to the point where I don't think it's going to be noticeable in day-to-day -day usage, you get the fan removed from the MacBook Air. This means that you're not going to ever hear any fan noise from the laptop at all, and you can set it on any surface, hard, soft, cloth, whatever. You can use the laptop absolutely anywhere. You don't have to worry about stowing it in a tight zipped bag or something like that when you're traveling. I really think not having a fan is a huge advantage in a laptop, and it just makes a lot of sense. So now let's talk about why you might step it up to the MacBook Pro. It definitely makes some sense to step it up to the MacBook Pro if you know you can take advantage of the battery. Now, even with a MacBook Air, I usually do not have to charge more than once every other day when I'm using it the full entire day, which is, simply amazing, but you can basically guarantee that kind of battery performance with a MacBook Pro since it is narrowly better than the Air. You're also going to get slightly better sustained performance, so I can't really think of a lot of use cases for me that that would be advantageous, but if you game on the laptop or something like that, it might help to have the fan since it will help you stay cooler and therefore stay at the maximum performance for longer. Besides that, the real only other main reason you would upgrade to the MacBook Pro is if you like the touch bar. I'm perfectly fine with just the buttons, but the touch bar is a nice convenience feature, so if that's worth it to you, the $300 might be worth it. Apple really hit it out of the park with this line of Macs, and if you're not opposed to developing on Mac OS, these M1 devices are great. I personally have loved developing on my M1 MacBook Air, and it feels like such a worthwhile purchase. Unmatched build quality, fanless design, great keyboard and speakers, astounding performance, long-lasting battery, all at a reasonable price, are just some of the reasons this is such a compelling package. All of these are peripheral benefits that software developers actually get to enjoy thanks to Apple's great work ensuring that software apps and tools simply work. If this package fits your needs, give it a try. That said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did find it helpful, please give a like, it helps so much, and leave a comment with any comments that you have or questions that I can answer. Also, I'll include links as described below, and I hope you'll subscribe and join me in the next one.